Hey YouTube, how you doing? So, I just about to hit the sack, but I just wanted to make a quick video. This, this past week's events have just really, uh, I would say, just have affected me deeply. And I imagine for the majority of you all, it has affected you deeply too. But I was just sitting down thinking. One of the things that I've heard often amongst friends, uh, church leaders, media, is, well, we need to just love. You know, pray and love. I'm a strong believer in prayer. I definitely love. I'm a Christian. I believe that prayer is essential to be in the communication with God. Prayer is essential in communication with Jesus. I believe those things. But what I'm also seeing and what I hear in the backdrop when somebody says, well, we just need to pray or we just need to love is, well, I'm going to just do these things because really I can't do anything else or I don't want to do anything else. This is comfortable. Now, of course, this isn't everybody. Maybe some of you are watching um, would say, prayer for me is very hard because uh, my family has been involved with that or I feel it strongly uh, or or loving is difficult for me in this time because I don't know who to trust or how to trust. I I get that. I was just sharing with a friend of mine the other day. He says, man, for the first time in, uh, in my life, have I ever felt ever so affected by feeling the effects of the latest tragedies in America. I live in Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska, as a matter of fact. And so we, we kind of feel things later on, you know, if there's something that comes out in the lower 48, let's say the new Jordans. Uh, if they came out tomorrow, then we're waiting at least a week <laughs> for things to come up here and it, and it to hit here, take effect, or or anything like that. Well, it's a little bit of the same thing with this. This, these, these tragedies that we have witnessed, literally witnessed, they are not what has brought the reality here or anywhere. It is the reality that they've gone on for a long time. Now, I do not excuse uh, the majority of the protests that we've seen that become violent or people running onto highways or um, just doing stupid stuff. It's a horrible representation especially for the people who want to engage in the craziness on a level that allows for us to sit down and talk candidly, uh, expressing ourselves wholeheartedly without having to feel like I need to hurt somebody else in my pain. At any rate, going back to prayer and love, I believe that while prayer is essential, like I said, and loving is essential, like I said, those should not be excuses for us not to act or to get involved um, on a deeper level. I'm not sure what that looks like for you. But just using it as a cloak to not engage people 
uh, of all nationality and colors and uh, backgrounds, how to engage in the culture, and engage in the time that we're in, engage with our minds and our, with our hearts. How do we come together as people first, valuing humanity? If you value somebody, then you will sit with them. If you will sit with them, you will discuss with them about the things that have happened or or are is happening or will happen. I um I said this on Facebook the other day. And I caught some flack behind it because the way that it could be perceived is is sharp, but my intent in saying it wasn't out of uh out of hate. It wasn't out of a um Oh, jeez, I can't even think of the word. I wasn't giving permission by what I said for anybody to do anything that was going to put anybody's life in jeopardy. What I said is I watched the, the sh videos of Baton Rouge in Minnesota. I was deeply... Uh, deeply saddened, and I thought about all the things that we have seen up to this point, and, and so I said, if you know anybody who is in law enforcement, it would be a good thing if you were to tell them to find another career path. The reason why I said it was, there is something coming that is huge. This is a boiling point where it's going to tip over, and there's no good, and there's no bad, it's just all horrific, tragic. Um, the next day that I had said this, uh, Texas had happened, where the sniper was picking off these police officers. That's one of the things I had said in my posting, that soon we're going to see this happening. Now, this wasn't a threat. At least that's not what I meant it to be. There was people that got upset um, that I put it, and some people um, were glad. However, the point I was trying to make is we're in a dangerous point in America's history where you cannot expect sleeping giants to slumber forever. And at this point is where I would say we must engage in the midst of the craziness in a way that allows for us to have meaningful conversations. We have to be able to come to the table of, of, uh, of commonality, I would say where we value humanity. I don't have to agree with you to, to, uh, to love you. I could disagree with you to love you and love you still. Uh, but we got to be able to have the conversations. I want to understand you, and I would hope that you would want to understand me. If we can get to, the, to a common ground. We can move forward. Because at the end of the day, what has been lost in America is a value for humanity. Just baseline humanity. You're human, I'm human. You're a people, I'm a people too. We mess up, we do well. But I want to value you. And I would hope that you would value me. This is the thing that needs to be valued, or I mean at least modeled. How do we value and how do we love well, not in just passing, but how do we engage in love with each other that is meaningful and brings hope and searches for solution with each other. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a good day. Talk to you later.